Hey there everybody, we will talk about the electric generator and we will try to understand the scientific principle operation behind the electric generator. How do they work and how do they give us this uh, endless amount of energy uh, coming to us in, in the shape of electricity, all right? So the, the way is, it's not actually endless amount of energy, it's a conversion of energy. We convert energy, mechanical or rotational energy, into an electrical energy. How, how that goes is that you put a coil, like a huge, not just one coil, you pro probably put hundreds, maybe thousands, maybe tens of thousands of loops or coils on an axis of rotation, and you make these rotate by an external agent, like uh, water falling from the dam, wind turbines, tide or any kind of means so you wrote you rotate that by an external agent within the vicinity of what a magnetic field so you sandwich these coils by huge magnets so you put a huge magnet and a huge coil and you make this coil rotate as this rotates so let's look at this part of the coil so let's take one loop for for simplicity so there is a coil here and this coil is going to rotate perpendicular to the page. It's going to rotate this way. Okay, so it's going, so it's like this way, and it's going to rotate this way. As it's rotating, the, the this part of the coil, this one here, is going to come out of the page towards us. So that would be the velocity. Okay, the magnetic field is this way, as it seems, as as it's seen this direction. Using the right hand rule. We know that the velocity is coming to us because the coil is coming back outside the page to us. The magnetic field is going to the right, and that's my right. That's my right here. So the, the velocity is my thump. This is what the, the magnetic field, so the force will push the current up. And that's why here we have up going up here. And for the other one, because it's rotating the other direction, the current will go down. And it's going to create a current too. Okay? So we're going to create two currents. We're going to collect these currents and take them away on a grid and put them, sending out, sending them out to industry or houses or whatever. And if you have been to the Hoover Dam, you will see huge coils, like bigger than the room. And the water is constantly rotating those and electricity is being uh, generated there okay so how does this work so let's actually now look at the equations so we know from the equations that the electromotive force for this part of the loop let's say this is the has a length l we know it's equal to v the velocity at which we are rotating it with times b which is a magnetic field and times l times sine theta and as i said this is theta okay now we have one here and one here, so E is actually twice as much. And as I mentioned, you're not going to put one loop, you're going to put hundreds of loops. So I'm going to actually, the E, I'm going to say 2NVBL sine theta. All right? Now what else is there? The velocity of this part coming at you is going to be equal to if that was here the middle of it so and this is here the radius okay that was the radius here the velocity as we learned from uh, transforming angular velocity to translational velocity velocity is equal r times omega where this omega is known as the angular velocity and this r i wrote it big r i can write it small r r is the radius so i can put that here instead of the velocity here theta is known as the angular position okay and that's equal to omega times t omega is the, the angular velocity and t is time if you multiply velocity by time you get the position okay so let me rewrite this equation here again so i'm going to take it here so e is equal to 2n v i said is equal to r times omega which is the angular velocity times b times l times sine omega t it's getting it's getting a little bit complicated but we can make it simpler because this r times 2 gives us what 
this whole thing, right? R times 2 gives us like the diameter or the whole width of the coil. And L is what? This part. Now, L times R times 2R gives us the area. So that's, we just made it simpler a little bit. So E is equal to N B A and remains omega times sine omega T. So after rearranging and putting 2R times L equals to the area, we get this nice equation for the electric generator. And that's it. For the electric motor, it was NBAI sine phi. Let me actually put them all together. So that's for the torque for the electric motor is equal NBAI sine phi. Phi is the torque angle, as we mentioned. Look, NBA, NBA. Omega for the generator because you are supplying the rotation by an external force like water. I because you are using the current to transform for the electric motor the current to torque. So this is the electric generator and electric motor totally opposite to each other. Okay. All right. And, and that's the idea behind the electric generator. I want to remind you that omega also, which is the angular velocity, is equal to 2 pi times the frequency. It's Omega is also uh, called, in addition to angular velocity, it's called the angular frequency. And it's, it's a very important um, concept too, to know. Uh, another thing we need to know that the period is equal to 1 over the frequency. The frequency is measured in hertz. So the unit of the frequency is hertz. And I would also like to mention two notes about the electric generator. This part of the electric generator does not contribute to the uh, inducing a current. The other note that I would like to mention is that the current that is produced in this is going to rise up little by little as this starts moving. So the current is going to rise up, rise up, and gets into maximum value. As the current reverses its direction, it's going to go down, 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 and it's going to go be at at 90 at 180 degrees. So when this whole thing turns 180 degrees, like half a loop, it's going to go down to zero. So the current is going to rise up maximum to a 90 when it's 90 degrees, like totally perpendicular to this is going to ma be maximum. As it keeps rotating, the current is going to start going down. When it makes half around, or 180 degrees here, the current is becoming zero again. Okay? And it reverses direction. And it gets maximum in the negative direction at 270 degrees. And it keeps going up now, okay, till it's zero degrees. At zero degrees, it becomes zero again, and we re return to this original position. And the cycle starts again. And that's why this is known as an alternating current. It rises up as the coil in, uh, rotates. When it's perpendicular, it's maximum. Then it starts going down to 180 degrees. Then it goes down maximum again in the negative direction at 270, and it goes back to zero at the original position to zero current. And it repeats itself, the cycle repeats itself. And that's why this is called an alternating current or AC. All right? Okay. And that's it for this one. Thank you.